And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for a deck we're going to call Frozen Fate, our last donation deck of the day. This is a viewer submitted deck where we're going to be combining Bilgewater and Freljord. So now I've played a lot of Bilgewater Freljord decks. This one is uh, has a lot of card draw and just a lot of efficiency, really low mana cost uh, with throughout the deck. As you can tell, um, you know, over seven, you know, 31 of our 40 cards cost three or less mana. Um, you know, so over 75% of our deck is cost three or less mana. But we're going to have extra card draw. We're going to have like Averroes and Sentry in here. Uh, shared Spoils, draw on the card. A um, lot, of, lot of different plunder stuff. See, we got three Slide of Hands, one Pilfered Goods. The person that donated for this said that since the Pilfered Goods nerf, they've actually liked Slide of Hand more. And I can I can kind of understand that. So you may think that, um, well, isn't Pilfer Goods just better because it's a two for one? Well, yes. I mean, Pilfer Goods, well, Pilfer Goods is a two for one. I, I shouldn't have said the word yes there. Pilfer Goods is a two for one. But slow, so is Sleight of Hand. Even though Sleight of Hand just draws one card and you're spending one mana to draw one card, so a one for one, you know, like you're not you're not actually gaining an advantage there, but you also remove a card from the opponent's hand. So you... Um, you know, you remove one from them, you you draw one up, so you know it's still the same two for one kind of thing. Sleight of hand has a lot of variants, so does pilfer goods, they both do, but sleight of hand probably has even more variants. It's slow instead of burst, that's that hurts. You're only drawing one card, not two, so that hurts against twisted fate. And there's times your opponent gets those generated cards, your Draven's Spinning Axes and your Mushroom Clouds and stuff like that that you take with Sleight of Hand and that makes you sad. But the payoff is huge. You can take some really important cards, some really good cards. You know, you can get your Rekindler, your Scythria, your Ruination, your Harrowing, um, all sorts of stuff like that. You can just, uh, you know, ruin their plans and take some really impactful cards. You can take removal spells that suddenly now they don't have to use and now you have extra removal spells. That's always great. Um, so it's, the nab mechanic in general is pretty high variance because you don't really know what you're gonna be drawing. You can't, you know, like when you build a deck with card draw, you can build your deck how you want and you know the cards that you're gonna be drawing. When you have a card with nab, you don't know what you're gonna be drawing because you don't know what you're gonna be facing. And that kind of stuff. So it's it's high variance there. And then sleight of hand just kind of takes that variance up even more. But yeah, lots of powerful stuff. We got uh, Avros and Trapper, Flash Freeze, Fury. We only have 20 Bilgewater cards. So Yordle Grifter is not going to be hitting that often, right? So it's going to be like a 50-50 proposition whether or not Yordle Grifter is going to be hitting. But even if you don't get that uh, additional nab, it does generate those warning shots. And those warning shots are really nice with your Riptide Rex. And of course, all your other plunder cards as well. All right, so let's give this a try. We're gonna play some Frozen Fate. We're gonna go play five games over in Ranked um, and see how it does. Yeah, it can wreck aggro. You know, you can take like their Harrowing, that's their last card. You know, you can take their Basilisk Rider, like that kind of stuff, like it. Sleight of Hand, uh, how they empty their hand pretty quickly. You know, you take their Decimate and now suddenly they don't have the resource to finish the game off, like that kind of stuff. It can do a lot. All right, elusives for the first game. That's probably gonna be a difficult first game. Get rid of the sentry. They're just like never gonna block my Averroes and sentry. And I feel like I, I didn't. I think I wanted pool shark on turn one. And then we're gonna draw a two drop here and we're gonna play that two drop so we're not gonna need that Averroes and sentry. No. All right, it was risky. Watch this. I'll admit it was risky, but our deck has a whole lot of two mana cards. We had 
We had 20 cards. Oh, no, because we had that in hand. We had 19. We had 19 cards that we could have drawn and played in our deck. So over half of our deck, we would have been able to play. Down from the trees! This looks like a pretty good time for red card. Even though we're not taking out Greenblade Duo, it's still just a pretty decent red card. Clean those up. Now they have five cards in hand. We have five cards in hand, but we got... Some little things in play. Mm. Okay, we took their own Fury of the North. The Keeper of Masks. Not an elusive. I kind of wanted an elusive to be able to block their elusives. Big Navori Conspirator. Tread carefully. I'm not gonna use like Fury. They're gonna use Fury of the North on that. Wow. Okay, I'm happy with that. They walked around. I am happy with that. About something I was not expecting. No. That hurts as a miss. Definitely hurts as a miss. Again. Go on then. Watch the ball, folks. How are we going to deal with this fourth war? because we had an enraged yeti come in probably could have figured that out with my yordle no grifter so we're at six with twisted fate walk softly strike quickly Take it up with my friends. See, that's what I'm talking about. Take some elusives. That's what we need with the nab. Taking their elusives, not taking their keeper of masks and their fury of the north. Oh, I guess I should get rid of the one two, shouldn't I? I guess I should have got rid of this one. All right, so that'll be the blue card, so I can still play Fury of the North. No. Um. Man, I guess I'm playing this thing. I 
because I want the red card. I would have, like, if I had that extra man, I would have played Fury instead. All right, so I'm not attacking with the four two because I can't I can't risk them like blocking with Navor Conspirator on that and then on my four two and then using like a, a elixir of iron or something. You know they they somehow keep both of their elusives alive. I don't have a blocker. Or something weird happens. You know like like that like they and then they you know then they have seven coming in here and then they just draw another elusive and then I die right right like that's how I could die. We can't have that happen. I just don't like King P Wayfinder in that deck. They missed twice with that card. Unless a, my version of that deck, I'm playing Zed and Sejuani and not playing King Q Wayfinder, basically playing Sejuani instead. You know, just having Fury of the North, Elixir of Iron, Omen Hawk, it's just, it's, there's too many misses for that Kinku Wayfinder. <sighs> One time you, you yoinked their Omen Hawk before the Wayfinder dropped. And then did they have, so they didn't have like a one drop for it? First time playing against Vimer today. Attacks for double the damage that the Omen Hawk does this turn. Go playing that instead of Omen Hawk and Alone, see things as they Flash Freeze is probably oh, my well, spot. it's not necessarily my Flash worst card. It, it could be good against like a Vi or something. But no, those are not the ideal draw steps. Neither is warning shots. Thing is just a three three now. I'm happy for that. Ooh. I can pick black market merchant back up so we can replay that. I need them just to kill these Avarosan sentries. Order entropy, a never ending cycle. Safety will cost you. We'll probably lose because they have the high reading, you know, they have that combo turn five. We'll probably lose.
Yeah, surviving until Riptide Rex is going to be really difficult. And we're dead next turn. And I guess I have these flash freezes. Safeguard our homes! Maybe Flash Freeze keeps me alive next turn. Maybe. You cannot escape. You lack <laughs> Played Heimer in Labs and didn't get to drop any 3-1 elusives. As fate wills. Oh, that's sad. It's not worth playing Flash Freeze to keep them from gaining 3 life. I need to have Flash Freeze. Um, see, I can't even I can't even play Solitary Monk. Now, can I? I mean, I guess. I, mean, I have two blockers either way. I guess I'd rather have Solitary Monk and Yordle Grifter. Question mark? Play Sentry? So next turn, seven. If I play Sentry, we have nine mana. If I play Yordle Grifter, I just have the seven, and then we're just getting rid of it with Flash. Flash. Um. Yeah, you don't want to class me. Border from here. There's not not really any difference between playing two flash freezes or playing this to block and a flash freeze because like that thing blocks the three one. Very good hand. Slide the signal fires. Get yours. Justice. I had the ideal, really just the ideal Vimer hand. You know, solitary monk, shadow assassin, turn three, four, uh, and then. And then, you know, Heimer with Flash of Brilliance, get excited, make a bunch of 3 1 turrets. And just interaction, double spirits refuge. I get back up to 20. Alright, not the best. Three things going at this 3 1 turret. So, like, we're not killing Heimerdinger, not killing Vi. Only kill on the one health things. Games you do lose to... Heimerdingers are always feel bad. Come on. 
Yeah, they, they have announced that they're like they did announce in the, the last patch that they were, that they are going to be changing Heimerdinger up next week, so we'll see what happens. Which I had the mana for Flash Freeze also. So Vi stayed alive, Vi was going to do 5 damage to me, game's over. We need to get super lucky and kill every single thing, <laughs> and then also not have anything. I don't really know if that was even possible. I mean, yeah, I guess it was. We had to have four things go at Vi, and then one each at everything else. Yeah, Heimerdinger is just a, it's a rough card to play against. It's not, not an enjoyable card to play against. All right, Teemo Draven. So how are we gonna be able to stabilize against the aggro deck? You know, how are we gonna do here against the burn deck? And not only just stabilize, but then can we turn the tide and win the game before lethal amounts of burn are coming at us? is the question. First big mission. Very good Ruthless Raider. Card to draw. Won't find better this side of the sun. No refund. Oh, I can't wait. Um, <laughs> you stand on cold shots. Just some like a little family <coughs> family walking by, and so the dogs go crazy. Drawing two extra cards now with two, two pool sharks. That was a couple of good cards to draw. What did we catch? We'll take it. I'll try anyone. Not the best, uh, either gold card or red card. <laughs> Neither one of those. So we'll just go blue card and cast one of these shared spoils. No one's the wiser. That's some good pressure. We had a we've had a really really good hand. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. So 
I love, I love seeing that Black Market Merchant. I wanted to take a burn spell from them. Their burn deck. That seems like what we should take. Burn spell. Yeah. That's up. Everything's in place. Boom. Over there. Time to go. Decimate. Damn it. We got a lot of good, good fortune with this game. Yeah, that, this game went really smooth for us. G G's two and one. That's how that's how it happens. You put so many cheap cards. I like that Avarosen Trapper. The the Trapper looked really good game one also. Um, I like this Trapper in here. That's a card that I haven't really played in the Freljord Bilgewater deck before. It's a good three drop. You know, I've always played like Jaw Hunters. The Trappers looked nice though. Ooh, library, you may be behind, because yeah, you just said now all you need is a decimate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think your I think your stream's a little behind. But that's okay, that that happens sometimes. Yeah, hit that decimate, it was perfect. Yeah, one mana yeti when you're drawing like like one mana yeti works great with the uh with that one mana one two, right? Like we saw that. Worked great there. I don't know if I want to nab. Do I want to nab a card from their deck, make them more? No. Let's put those back. I'm gonna try out this sleight of hand against the the deck with like all like the expensive like cool. Uh, what are they called? Sea monsters. But I was definitely hoping with our two mulligans and two draws. Wow, nothing that costs one or two mana. Nothing. Like, half of our deck costs one or two mana. There's one drop. Yeah, and also Blast, anytime you want to link to the deck, do type exclamation point deck, and that will get you the Mobilitics the link trick. right there. They just obliterate. Wanderer Jettison. Cool. Those are good cards to obliterate. I remember one time I was playing Burn Aggro, I drew all spells from uh, into turn five or six, didn't have a single unit. Never so likely Maokai, Maokai. Uh, no, you don't need it. Like, so donation decks um, are, are either $10 or 10,000 of the channel points, the ties. With you, Shadow Those are the two, two things you can do for a donation deck. Like Riptide. So I know my top, so I'm not gonna play Yordle Grifter because I know the top card's Enraged Yeti because we played that two turns ago. We haven't drawn it. That top, that top card's 100% Enraged Yeti. So it doesn't really make the most sense to play the Yordle Grifter. And so now I'm just putting another Enraged Yeti in there, which honestly, like maybe this is a bad play. Like maybe, because do I really need five fives right now? Like they. Maybe we need to be looking for like Riptide Rex, things like that. They are going deep very quickly. Fight or die.
And as we know, there's Enraged Yeti. Now there's another Enraged Yeti there pretty quickly. Either the either this the top card or the next cards, you know, 50-50 chance. So I don't really need to play the Yordle Grifter also. We'll just have like Elixir of Iron and Flash Freeze. Give me the stuff. Stuff make happy. Dang. Get all of their cheap stuff. That's really good for them. Like that's exactly what you want with a deep deck. Your next turn's gonna be turn seven. They're gonna easily have Nautilus. They only have 10 cards left in the deck. I did not know that. So, Nautilus was human once, huh? I did not know that. Um, we know the next card then is Enraged Yeti. Since this one wasn't. So yeah, we have another Enraged Yeti on top. So Yordle Grifter is not going to be stealing anything. This is pretty rough. I'm just gonna attack. This game looks pretty over. Actually, I have, I have nothing to do this turn, just absolutely nothing. And then they'll be able to kill <clears throat> my Twisted Fate the next turn. And play all sorts of cheap sea monsters. GG's. Yeah, so the reason why with Riptide, shuffling a card into the enemy deck, the reason why that's good is because it completely removes it from play. So it's it's a removal spell that basically completely cancels out a card. Sure, it's randomized inside of their deck, but it's not it's not in, in play, it's not in hand, it, it gets rid of anything like that. So it looks like the Enraged Yeti was eliminated. We have found some tension between Enraged Yeti and Yordle Grifter this game. Um, but yeah, that's why it's good. Uh, it completely gets rid of something. No, I don't think we have any outs. Can't think of any. Should just have more devour adepts also. So yeah, I've already marked this up as a loss because now I don't think we have any outs. Even like Riptide Rex, like that's not going to do it. That's our most powerful card in our deck, and that's not going to do anything.
opponents had a great hand. You know, like they had, you know, a bunch of, you know, multiple, you know, they had Maokai on turn four that I don't have any answer to. And then, uh, you know, multi you know, multiple of the one mana card that tosses a bunch, multiple of the Thorny Toads. Uh, just got to toss a whole lot of cards. I'm not greedy. My friends, though. Hmm. Our last five draw steps were all Frel Yord, and still Yordle Grifter missed. We just we just drew five Frel Yord cards in a row, and our Yordle Grifter still misses the Allegiance trigger. Come on. Okay, two and two. Deep, de like this, the kind of deck that we're playing here, like this kind of mid-range deck is definitely going to struggle against deep. Like that's, uh, deep wants to face kind of slower, grindy mid-range decks, right? Like that's perfect for a deep deck, so. Tough matchup from just a theoretical standpoint of how cards line up and just what, just, uh, what the decks are doing, just, um, gameplay from, you know, gameplay theory, this is going to be a difficult matchup. <laughs> yeah, and that's true, we didn't have anything early at all. Well, I mean, I like Black Market Merchant a lot, but we need, we need a way to turn on Plunder against the aggro deck. Do we mulligan them without a way to turn on Plunder? I mean, they are just two ones. It's not great. Okay, this is this is better. Like I'd rather have I'd rather have these things to get in here and get some blocking in. Keeping the flash freeze, because I feel like that could be really important for blocking like, you know, Lucian, Darius, you know, whatever. Flash freeze could be a real important card. Don't get in my way. Remember when Pilfer Goods used to cost two mana? Back in the day. Gotcha. Well, I didn't know I was going to have that card. I was planning on, you know, I didn't block because so I was planning on attacking and going shared spoils. Good draw. Very good draw. Best draw we could have. Right on. Catch. Again, you, you notice we have our hand is Freljord, 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 Freljord. Here in play, we our last three plays were Freljord, 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 and yet our Yordle Grifter is still missing. You Point is maybe we're not the best Yordle Grifter deck, but creating warning shots is still pretty important. Let's end this. 
I am really glad I didn't warning shots shared spoils. Never see it coming. I am really glad we didn't do that. Lucian's about to level up. Rendia needs you to pay up. Where are you going? But we don't have anything else alive. To go along with that Lucian. I'm glad they didn't attack with Lucian at the end, that would have made. Um, that would have made my life more difficult also, because I could only frostbite either Lucian or the 6-4. The Attack. Dang, taking it all. <clears throat> Alright, we're going to be replacing that 1-1. One, one. So we wanted to play it first. We play in build rules. Some. Top two cards are going to get that plus two, plus two. And then draw them. Once you already have a plus one from the shared spoils, yep. That's what happens when you draw too many units and not enough spells. We really needed, you know, one spell, one more spell. You know, we had the two flash freezes, they were both very good, but we needed one more spell there towards the end. You know, our last five draws were Omen Hawk, Omen Hawk, Omen Hawk, or our last six were Omen Hawk, Omen Hawk, Pool Shark, Averroes, and Sentry, Pool Shark, Ruthless Raider. Those were our last six draw steps for those four cards. Um, you know, just need, we just need another one last trick there. Try to stay alive. Another flash freeze. Um, I guess the fury wouldn't have really helped. I guess looking at our deck, really flash freeze was only the only, was really the only thing or pilfered goods uh, that would have saved us that last turn. Pilfer goods to steal a spell from them. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about the Yor So the thing about Yordle Grifter is like the warding shot itself is also really valuable for the Riptide Rex. I kind of want to just play like two or three more Bilgewater cards and two or three less Frail Yord cards. Does that make sense? Like I don't really want to get rid of Grifter because that the warding shots are really important. And there's just two of them. I really liked Flash Freeze, and I really liked Averroes and Trapper. Shared Spoils looked pretty good, too. But I could see, I could see Shared Spoils leaving. Um, Sentry. 
I don't know. It's probably it's probably one of these two drops. It's probably not play Sentry and Raider. You probably play one and not the other. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Is playing something instead. I really like how Ruthless Raider can you know has that three power to block. That was really important multiple times. But maybe not Avarosen Sentry. Avarosen Sentry looked very meh. And just kind of, you know, like, this is like a slow plotting card, and, and it's kind of what the rest of the deck is. Um, <clears throat> so I, th I think I'd want to get rid of that for a Bilgewater card. Because, again, I, I, want, I want, like, some more Bilgewater cards. So, like, maybe that's Hired Gun. I do like Hired Gun. Like, this can be some more, like, this can be another, like, two-mana blocker, but can also be some removal for you or at least help help you out with like that removal um aspect um maybe you play jaw hunters also or petty officer petty officer is really good maybe you play one of these two cards you know the thing about taking out a two mana card is it does make turn one pool shark worse, right? Like having all these two drops does make, like that's that's what you want for like the turn one pool shark. It's kind of unfortunate that we didn't really get to slide a hand too much. It's unfortunate. The one time I had slide of hand, I took some useless card from the deep from the deep deck it's like the worst card to take the riptide um but no i like i like what we had going on here a lot of a lot of um efficient things we we're just kind of missing something seeing a little bit more power what if this deck played Brash Gambler? What if you just had like one Brash Gambler? So like later on, because like there's so much cheap stuff, like draw two fleeting, like you can just play those cards pretty much all the time. Or maybe it's Mystifying Magician. Maybe you just take like these crappy, um, you know, Omen Hawks and Pool Sharks. You have all these omen hawks pool sharks maybe you just turn those omen hawks and pool sharks into five drops what if you do that that could be something i don't know when you look at like these cards, basically almost, <laughs> basically all of them are playable, and that's that's the thing about Freljord plus Bilgewater is you can you can really um, play whatever you want. There are, you know, just such a high percentage of these cards are definitely playable. Like maybe it's Make It Rains. Maybe maybe that was like what we were missing is just the the Sentry should just be Make It Rains. Um, maybe that gives you like that extra spell that kind of helps out against aggro and stuff and. Um, you know, helps turn on plunder and do its thing. And it's also it's a two-mana card that you can play after Pool Shark if you want. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe you just keep sentry. So yeah. There's just <laughs> Yeah, it's uh there's just a, a really, really big uh amount of cards you can play. I would probably okay, I would I would replace what I would recommend doing is replacing the Sentry with Hired Gun. That's what I would do. I would try Hired Gun, like where, especially how you make like the five fives, where you have like those that can challenge. Um, I just want some more Bilgewater cards. Maybe not three Hired Gun though. Maybe two Hired Gun, and then a Jaw Hunters, or a Petty Officer. I kind of want to split that up. That's the thing is there's so many good cards that, it, and and you draw so many cards in this, it's probably good to have a wide variety of stuff and not just so many three ofs where you can, you know, like whenever, you know, you need a Jaw Hunters, you, you kind of have access to it or a Petty Officer or a, um, I guess our deck's not really that good of a Petty Officer deck. Um, 
or higher gun and stuff like that. Kind of split it up. This is the kind of deck that I think really does reward playing a bunch of one ofs. Because there's too many good options and games are different. Things don't always go according to plan. You never know what's going to happen. All that kind of stuff. So yeah, I may just start with like two higher guns and a jaw hunters and you know kind of work your way from there. Alright, that's it for tonight. That's it for Frozen Fate. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, as always, feel free to leave those comments. You know, how'd you like the deck? What do you want to see up next? Uh, do you got any ideas for meme tier Monday for next week? Which I guess I may have some good decks for that. But um, yeah, you know, leave those comments, hit that like button. And as always, I really, really appreciate y'all watching the videos. Um, yeah, I can't say that enough. Y'all are amazing. And of course, everybody here in a chat. Thank you for watching and everything like that. Did we climb today? No, not quite. We ended exactly where we started. It looked like we had an exact 500 day. Um, so, you know, that happens. The yeah, Fiora Harrowing was really cool. That was that was a neat one. And I think we got some good matchups for that too, whenever we played it. You're welcome, Nice Phil. Have a great night. Everybody else on YouTube, have a great night as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.